Thank you, worship team. Shailen, do you want to grab me a full music stand? I need one of these. That's what I need. Right? I need to stop using paper. Who uses paper anymore? Who uses, who uses paper? <laughs> the word is paper. Come on. What? The word is paper? The word is paper. The word is Jesus, actually. But anyways, if we're getting, you know, theologically correct. How are you guys doing today? You guys doing well? Amen. Amen. So we had a lot of complications today, huh? But you know what? It's, it's all right. Because we come here for Jesus. And no basketball hoop. No, uh, you're not coming anymore? All right. Well, if you're coming, never mind. I'm not going to say what I was going to say. But, um, oh, oh, I'll tell you later. Um, yeah, so anyways, we're working on getting a new basketball hoop. We're actually, we might be, um, if you guys want to help me pray for it, we might be getting two. So, uh, God is awesome. I threw one away, and I asked God to give me another one, a better one, and he decided to provide two. I just need a car to go pick them up. I don't have, <laughs> as you guys heard earlier today, I have a crappy car. So, <laughs> it doesn't really fit basketball, basketball nets in there. Uh, but, we're going to get a truck, we're going to pick up two basketball nets, and we're going to have some one-on-one -on -one games, three-on-threes, whatever, five-on-fives. We'll see what happens. But, uh, um, how many like basketball? Yeah, yeah. How many are soccer fans? Any rugby fans? Rugby, really? I love rugby. You know what? We having a football day in November. We should have a rugby day. That's all I'm saying. A church rugby team. Tackle? Well, there's no other way to play rugby. <laughs> there's no flag rugby. <laughs> that doesn't exist. But, all right, guys, if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to Mark chapter 6 as we begin to dive in God's Word. We're going to talk about the title of my sermon today Today is Expanding Your Capacity. Say it with me. Expanding Your Capacity. How many of you are like, I have no idea what that means? <laughs> you guys are like, I just came out of school. I don't really want to think about school words. Uh, expanding your capacity. Before I begin talking about or, uh, talking about Mark six, uh, going into my sermon, uh, I want to I want to ask you guys a quick question. And um, how many like being good at something? And not only good, but like excellent at something to the point where you're like the you know the the, the best one in the room. So I've been playing. So as I think as of two days ago, I got invited to this. To this clan, hey. to this group, yeah. right? Woo. To this team. Hey, hey. What? And I hate being bad, all right? <laughs> and there's this thing, like, you can invite people in your clan. And, like, every time we invite people, I'm like, why are we inviting this person? This person has horrible rates. And, and like, they're important people, and I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> in the words of Joey, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. They're not going to help us. So we're not going to let them in our team. Why? Because I hate being bad at something. I hate, I just hate, I hate stinking, right? More than stinking, I hate losing. How many hate losing? And um, so uh, there's things that I just love, right? And my problem is, I don't know if you guys have this problem, but I have, I have issues in life. Jesus is helping me through them. That's why I got into ministry, because I was like, wow, I have a lot of issues. And a lot of people have my issues, and maybe I can help them if I can go, you know, work through my issues out. What? Exactly. Who doesn't have issues, right? So I'm just, I'm being, I'm being vulnerable with you guys. I'm being transparent. One of my issues, I love being the best. It doesn't matter what it is. Like, I'm going to tell you something about myself. I practice handwriting. What? 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 Why? Because I hate bad handwriting. I do. I want to be the best handwriter ever. I don't know why. Because that's how God made me. And I hate being bad at things. And when people say, wow, you have, you have bad handwriting, I'm like, I, I have to practice. I now have to practice my, my handwriting. But it's not just like, it's not just like, 
like your, your, your detached letters. Like I've been practicing, not like the everyday handwriting, I've been practicing my cursive. How many learned in cursive like a third grade and left it there? <laughs> you learned cursive in third grade and then you're just like, yeah, I passed, I'm done, I don't ever need to use that again. Like welcome to the new age, we have iPads, iPhones, and we don't need cursive anymore. How many know how to write cursive? How many like writing cursive? How many use cursive like on a daily basis? Early, early. So listen guys, listen up real quick. Let me get our retention. I'm talking about cursive and you guys are like going everywhere. I just, I just hate, I just hate being bad at things, right? But one sport, I, and I love sports, and one of the sports that I really enjoyed was wrestling because you don't have to, you don't have to be, you don't have to be tall to wrestle, right? Like, yeah, it's better if you're short. So I have, I have an advantage, like. And I, I'm both, right? So strong, flexible, and short. I'm like, nah, you need to. <laughs> Little gremlins are great at wrestling. So listen, so I'm great at wrestling, right? Because I'm short. But, and I, and I, I quickly became good. But you know what made me upset? Is that one of the sports that I really love, I, I'm really bad at. Basketball. Basketball. I'm really bad at basketball. And I'm really short. Yeah, well, I'm decent. But like, when high school, like when everyone played, like, I, and I was short in high school, imagine that, it's crazy, right? Yeah, it's, can you go, how short can you go? Uh, but, but, so I used to be really bad, I used to be, I'm still so am really bad at basketball. But I always found it unfair that like, some people were just good because they were taller, AKA Shaq. Yeah, I was gonna say, Shaq was right? Right, like literally, the guy can just grab the ball and like dunk it in the net. I'm like, that's not even, like you don't even have to jump. I went to, um, in Philadelphia, there's a there's a museum and it has like his footprint, okay? Yeah, no, no, I'm not even joking. Make, do that again. That is Shaq's footprint. If Shaq kicked you in the chest, it would cover like your whole torso. It would cover from the waist all the way to your face. You think I'm exaggerating, but I'm really not. I think his like shoe size, his shoe size is like 24. Yeah, that's literally three times of, like, it's it's ridiculous. What do you mean? All right, well, whatever. Yao Ming, okay, seven feet tall. He's like a whole foot taller than seven six, okay. But listen, and I'm like God, but that's not really fair. You ever feel like that? Like the somebody else's capacity to play to do something is unfair to yours? What? You just need a bigger car. You probably drive a muscle truck. But listen, guys, you ever, you ever, you ever experienced that? Like you want to do something, but you feel like you're at a disadvantage. You know, like you feel like, uh, you feel like the the, the thing, like it is just a natural disadvantage. I'm like, this guy didn't do anything to be seven foot five. Like he just has good genes, you know. And then, and that's like not something I can control. Like my my uh, my basketball coach, he was like, hey, if like you you'll be better if you just get taller. <laughs> like thanks, bro. Like. I'll work on that during the summer. Like, I don't know what you want me to do, dude. Like, it doesn't, I can't do anything about that. My capacity to play basketball is like, has reached its 5'5 five limit. And I'm actually not 5'5. Five five. I think I'm like 5'4 and like, I don't know, like three quarters or something. Yeah, well, I don't think you do. Actually, I don't think you do. 6'4, I'm 5'5. Five five. I'm the opposite. So, so to me, it was always unfair because I was like, man, like, this, this person's capacity to be able to play basketball is so much higher than mine, but it has nothing to do with what, like, it has nothing to do with me. It's not, it's not something that I can help or can't help. Anyone ever felt like that? Anyone ever had, like, for example, um, I like drawing, but I'm a horrible artist, right? And some people, like, they make circles and they look nice. You know what I'm talking about? Some people are like, I'm like, yo, that circle's perfect. And then, like, my circle looks like a square. <laughs> it just looks like a rhombus. And I'm like, my ability, my capacity, my capacity to draw is just not as great as somebody else's who's been naturally gifted in a certain area. And, um, and I'm just one of those people who I just, I just hate being bad at things. And so every once in a while, I'll contemplate, how can I get my capacity greater? Right? You guys ever think that? Like, um, maybe you're good at something and then somebody else that's better than you, right, walks in the room. For me, I, use, I, I play guitar, and I used to think I played guitar well until YouTube came along, right? And I don't know if you ever thought you were good at something, and then you went on YouTube, and then you see like a two-year-old Asian kid all the way in Japan playing the guitar with like one hand, right, in his foot. <laughs> and like, 
or like playing the piano with one hand and you're like, or like, it just, it just doesn't even make sense. Like, I'm like, or like, maybe it's like, you know, those, uh, those prodigies who maybe you think you like math. Maybe I loved math when I was in high school. Maybe that, see, maybe that's your thing, right? And then, you know, you get in a room and then, you know, you ask a question like, hey, what's this, you know, this, 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 and then they do it in their heads. Or like, for example, the grocery store, when people like are able to like, calculate things like immense numbers on their head and you're like yeah everybody does that that's normal to calculate large amounts of numbers in your head automatically and quickly <laughs> well I, I feel bad just picking on Asian people but I look Asian so that's all I can do it don't do it but what so so guys listen guys listen up real quick you ever, you ever, you ever get to that place where you're like, man, like, and then you, you get into that, you get to in that room with that person, and you're no longer the smartest person, you're no longer the best athlete, you're no longer the best this, and like, I don't know about you guys, but for me, it triggers something, right? And I, and I, and I try, to, I try in my own, in my own power to realize, like, how can I get better at this? Maybe it's math, and you're like, how can I get better at mathematics? How can I get better at drawing, right? And like, and if you're like me, you're like, yo, just give me a month, I'll be back. I won't sleep for this whole month. I'm gonna practice. Practice, practice. Anyone else get addicted to something? Like they're like they're the type of person. I don't care if I have to shoot a thousand free throws every day. I will do it. I don't care if I have to go into custom games and shoot dummies in the head like 130 million times. I will do it. Like you will do the most boring and monotonous task just to get better at something. Anyone else like me like that? Like you're like, all right, my circles stink, so I'm gonna make better circles. I'm a, my, the eyes of my characters are gonna be amazing. Like, and you just start drawing eyes. I remember like having an artist friend who used to draw anime, and like she would draw eyes for like days. Like her whole page was just covered in different like eyes, and I was like, dude, like you need to relax with that. Like that's kind of that's like kind of creepy. Like you open a book and all you see is eyes. It's mad scary. And so and so there's this need, there's this drive, right, to try to extend and to, and to open up our capacity. But there's places like, for example, my height, there's nothing I can do about it. I can't, I can't, I, I can't create more capacity in my height than what was given to me. Uh, we're not to get back to the 70s. What, what would you guys do? What would you guys do if you saw me with platforms someday? That'd be awkward. That'd be awkward. But one place, one place, hey guys, listen, one place, one place where you can always increase your capacity is your capacity for faith. You guys ever you guys ever met someone who felt like they had more faith than you did? You ever meet somebody like that? I have people like that in my life where like it looks like they have so much faith it looks like they almost have a different God than I do. <laughs> like their God is like super and uber generous, right? And like they pray once and everything happens for them, right? And like my God like works off like the food stamp system. Right? Like you can't get what you want. Here's a here's a coupon. You know, you don't get you don't get you get store brand. That's what you get, you know? And like I pray like thirty thousand times and like and what I get is like I just get by. Anyone ever felt like that? Like some people when they pray or some people their level of faith is just so much bigger than than maybe your own. Can we be honest a little bit? By the show of hands? You guys felt like that? I feel like that sometimes. Like I know there's some pastors like they they're, they're like they're like, they have the, you know, churches of like thousands of people and, uh, you know, they pray and crazy miracles happen. I'm like, dude, how are you such a beast? <laughs> like, how, do, how, do you, how, how does this happen? How, do you, how is it that your level of capacity for faith is so much bigger than mine, right? And automatically me hating to be bad at anything, I start thinking, I'm like, how can I increase my capacity? The reason for that is because if I ever got to heaven, and God said, hey, you could have been the next Steve Curry, right? Yeah. Stephen Curry. Yeah. Stephen Curry, right? Yeah. If he said, if God said to me, if God said to me, you could be the next Stephen Curry. You could have been that person if you just practiced hard enough. Or if you just tried hard enough. Or if you just ate the right vegetables and enough milk, right? I'd be upset. Because I didn't become Stephen Curry. I didn't make millions of dollars playing basketball. Yeah. Steph, whatever his, his name is. Whatever his name is, I don't, really, I don't really care. But what I'm saying is, you guys have somebody that, that, that maybe you look up to and you're like, man, if I got to heaven and God told me I could have been like this person and I didn't become this person, if I didn't fulfill all that I could have been, you would be upset. Anyone else, anyone else like that? Where, where if you got to heaven and God said, yeah, you could have done that. And I was like, wait, wait, I could have? 
Instead of like living this life, I could have I could have done all this, achieved all this, overcome all this, accomplished all of this. And uh, but then but anyways, I, so I'm talking about increasing our capacity to hold faith today. Increasing your capacity to hold faith. Really quick, we're gonna. Um, oh, actually, increasing your capacity. So there's certain things that you're that you can't that you can't control. For example, your height. Okay, me. If I could control my height, I'd be taller. I'd be a baller. Whatever. But <laughs> I would. I would. But there's some things I can't control. But I want to. I want to. I want to get you guys to see a metaphor that maybe will guys help you understand. For example, I want you to think about your lungs. How many ever seen lungs on those like smoking commercials? You guys know what I'm talking about. They look gross. They're all black charcoal. But they look gross. Especially like smoker lungs, they look disgusting. So listen, real quick. You ever seen lungs? You can't change the size of your lungs, right? You can't. Like you can't add more lung to your lung. You just can't, all right? Please don't try this at home. Don't try to prove me wrong. Just take my word for it. You can't change the size of your lungs, all right? But you can increase the capacity that your lungs can hold oxygen. There's a video. Did you know that? Yeah. yeah. You can run a lot. You can practice. You can hold your breath. You can do. I want everyone of us to do this with me, really quick, right? I want you to take a deep breath. Deep breath. All right. On the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Take a deep breath. Now, only using. Hold it. Only using your nose. Take another deep breath. Hold it. Take one more. All right, let go, let go, let go. You just increased your capacity to hold oxygen in your lungs. You felt it, right? Like you felt like your lungs. This guy's about to pass out. Please don't pass out. Please don't pass out. I don't need parents. To like, what are you doing up there? But listen, you've just increased your capacity, and you can feel it, right? Your lungs, like they like almost hurt a little bit. You're like, oh shoot, there's no more, there's no more room in there. What do you guys think is the record for holding your breath underwater? World Guinness record. 15 minutes? 40 minutes? What? Yeah, it's called, there's a word for that. It's called drowning. What? Nine minutes. All right, any other takers? We have 9, 15, and 40, which is the same as dead. 9, 10? 11. All right. What? 30, 30, wow, you guys are crazy. All right, can we play this video to find out what the world record is for holding your breath? Turn the lights down, please. Please don't try this at home again. Stay. We want to see if you can break your world record for holding your breath. Currently, 20 minutes, 10 seconds. I'll give it my best shot. I really want to see what I'm made of. So I'm ready to push the envelope. For his record attempt, Stig has chosen the controlled environment of a dive training pool. And to get a better understanding of what's happening to Stig's body, Greg's joined by fellow scientist Jim Pate, an expert in physiology. <laughs> Stig's breath holding speciality is known as pre oxygenated static apnea. This involves holding position under the surface and inhaling pure oxygen just beforehand. So, normally, when you breathe air in, it's a mixture of nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. By him just breathing 100% oxygen now, he's eliminating all of those other gases. He's super saturating himself. Fully oxygenated, Stig is ready to go. Okay, good luck, Stig. To beat his world record, Stig cannot take a breath for another 20 minutes. That's so crazy. Oh my Stig, you guys can try to hold your breath for an entire video it's if you can. 15 minutes in. It's only three minutes long. And eating it by now. Right? Enough time. He's still holding his breath. Oh, I'll be Stick has just 1 minute 15 seconds to go to beat his own world record of 20 minutes 10 seconds. Actually, he's his brother who's looking after him. He's, he's a medic. Yeah. And monitoring what's going on to make sure he doesn't black out. 19 minutes. Absolutely phenomenal. Relax your neck. He flies. Oh, no. He passes out of Everything is safe. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Exactly. 10 seconds to go. This is the one miracle. He is a he's gonna do. Five seconds. Uh -huh. Two. 
2010. And he's done it. The new world record. He's actually broke his own yeah. world record. That is incredible. How much longer can Steve go for? 2030. You can do it, buddy. 2115. Holding your breath on land is not that dangerous. You do that in water, you go unconscious, you'll die. 2130, 50, 51, 52, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 22 minutes. <sighs> Incredible. Yo. When, any anyone else base? Anyone else have like palpitations and like anxiety while you're watching that? She like, I can't breathe. <laughs> I watched that the first time and I was like, I feel like I can't breathe. I walked into the office and I, it was so amazing. Listen, it was so it was so amazing that I walked into the office and I was like, Amanda, do you know what the world record for holding your breath underwater is? Do you know? And like, I, I went around the office asking everyone, I was like, do you know? Do you know? You should know. This is important. I was like, do you know? I asked Matt too when he walked in. I was like, Matt, before you start talking to me, do you know what the world record is for holding your breath underwater? And everyone says like nine, 15 minutes, which by the way, nine minutes is still a long time. 15 minutes is still a long time. 22 minutes means that I could literally go make myself some mac and cheese, right? Wait till it gets unhot, uh, till it gets cold, right? Eat it, put it back, and he's still in the water, all right? That's a long time. But how many know that guy didn't get there overnight, right? It takes time to increase your capacity. He didn't change his lungs. He didn't change his lungs. He didn't get bigger lungs. All that he did, he increased his capacity to hold more oxygen in his lungs. And tonight I wanna to talk about being able to increase our capacity for faith so that when we see other people who have, quote unquote, more of God, we don't have to we don't have to say wow that's something only reserved for certain people but that really that that's that's a lifestyle that is available to all of us you can have as much of, and i'm sure you've heard this before you can have as much of god as you want the only trick is it talks about in john 3:30 if you want to write any scripture down john 3:30 is a good one to write down and it says that he must increase but i must decrease right um, i don't know if you guys ever swam professionally or like you know for high school or anything like that but like I'm talking about like 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 swimming three strokes breathe three strokes breathe bubbles 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 three strokes breathe bubbles 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 breathe bubbles 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 breathe all right you guys know what I'm talking about I it took me forever to learn how to swim because I would just hold my breath like and I was an expert at like fooling people into thinking that I was actually breathing and like so that I would pass to the next class but I would just hold my breath because, and this is why I messed up, because I forgot that breathing is a two-part exercise. You take a deep breath, but at some point you have to like exhale, okay? And so I forgot that, I almost forgot that part. I don't know why, it never dawned on me that like in order, in order to breathe in again, you need to let go of the things that are inside of you from, your, from the first breath, right? All the carbon dioxide that's, that's, in your, that's in your lungs now. So what would happen is I would take a deep breath, and I would swim, and I would forget to do the bubbles. And then I would do three strokes, and I would just look up, and then I'd go back down. And I would just literally hold my breath for like the entire lap, which is really bad, which is really bad for swimming, because you get really lightheaded. But, um, and, and I think there's something to be said about that, that sometimes in order to increase your capacity for oxygen, you have to learn how to exhale. And in order for you to continue breathing and to, and to continue uh, succeeding, you have, to, you have to, yes, you have to learn how to take deep breaths in, but at the same time, you have to let go of certain things. And uh, as, he, as he increases in your life, you have to learn how to decrease things from your own life that turn you away from God. And I don't know what those things are for you, and they don't have to be all sin. I'm not, talk, I'm not just talking about sin, but I'm talking about if you want to have a faith right, that is comparable to other people that you see, and you're like, man, your God is so much bigger than the God that I have. There's a reason for that. It's because they're exhaling a whole bunch of other things, right, that aren't necessarily sin, but they're saying, you know what, I'm going to prioritize things as yuku. I'm going to prioritize things as church in my life. I'm going to prioritize reading the Bible. I'm going to prioritize having godly friends in my life. 
and I'm gonna start letting go of other things that maybe hold me down or that, in, that, that keep me from being able to take other breaths when I'm at youth group or when I'm, when I'm in, 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 in God's presence. You guys understand what I'm saying? Breathing, it's a two-part exercise. You breathe in, you take deep breaths, but at some point, you have to exhale all the other stuff. You guys get it? Yeah. All right, really quick. Mark 6, um, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty big passage. Um, starting verse 30, you guys there? Say amen if you're there, if you have a Bible. Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus, we got to get work on that. That's, that's not acceptable. But anyways, verse 30, chapter 6. The apostle returned to Jesus from the ministry tour and told him that they had well, all that they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, let's go by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles did have time to eat. I love the Bible. One of the big reasons I love the Bible is because it talks a lot about food. And I feel like I feel like Jesus understands when people get hangry. I really do. I'm like, Jesus gets me. And he does. He's like, dude, there's a lot of people coming. My disciples haven't eaten. And when my disciples don't eat, they get they get an attitude. They get kind of cranky. They get hangry. You guys you guys know what I'm talking about. When you don't eat for a while and you've been working, you guys ever like start working or maybe you're outside playing and you just forget to eat? Right? I know I, talk about, I know I talk about this a lot, but it's true. Jesus understands. Jesus gets me. So anyways, he's like, my disciples haven't eaten. They haven't rested in a while. Let me make sure they don't do anything crazy. And let me take them, let me take them by themselves away so that we can kind of replenish ourselves. Aren't you, aren't you glad that Jesus, that Jesus lets you replenish yourself? That Jesus cares enough for you, uh, about you to know that when you need rest, he's like, you know what? Let's just, let's just come over here. So, and so they left, they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. But many recognized them and saw them leaving. And people from many towns ran ahead along the shore and got there ahead of them. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. So Jesus is trying to get his disciples away. He's trying to get them to, to a place where he can get them, you know, back rested and, 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 and replenish them because they haven't eaten in a while. And people see them leaving, right? They're not getting the hint. They're like, they're leaving from you. Like they're running away from you. And so they decide to go to the destination and meet them there. Anyone ever have that where like you're trying to leave from somebody? Somebody's maybe creeping you out or whatever, ladies. And like you go somewhere and they just appear there. And you're like, oh, you followed me here. <laughs> But it's like coincidence. You guys know what I'm talking about. So these people from all over the town, right, decide to go to where Jesus was going to be with his disciples. And I, just as a side note, really quickly, if you decide to have more of God and to increase your capacity for faith, you'll have people that follow you. If you begin to live a life that is filled with joy, if you begin, a life, if you begin to live a life that, that where you follow Jesus and you begin to, to become more like him, people are going to be drawn to you and going to want to hang out with you. So if you're an introvert and don't want to be bothered with people, just be mean. All right. Be jealous. Be envious. All right. Be violent. All right. Be the type of person that just be opposite of Jesus and people will leave you alone. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. But the more you begin to act like Jesus, more people are going to be like, wow, like there's something about that person that's different. There's, some, there's, there's a different way that they're living life that I'm maybe missing out on. And if I just hang out with them, maybe I'll understand what it is. You guys know what I'm talking about? All right. That's just a side note. But I just want you guys to know that the more you begin to live like Jesus, the more people will be drawn to you. So it says, Later again, and he began teaching them. He had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place. It's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the nearby farms and villages to buy something to eat. Food <laughs> comes up again. And uh, I, think what, I think what the disciples are really saying here, um, and I'm just part, trying to put myself in their shoes, and really what's happening is they're supposed to go somewhere, relax, and eat, okay? 
And when they got there, they this happened to be more work for them to do, right? A whole bunch of people showed up, and like Jesus started teaching them. So they're like, "Great! Like now we're gonna be here for you know you know how long Jesus teaches, so you're gonna be here for a while, and uh, <laughs> you're gonna be here for a while, which means we're not gonna eat for a while, right? I'm just saying, if I'm a disciple, that's what I'm thinking. I was like, "Yeah." So we were supposed to get Chipotle, but now we're not gonna get Chipotle for a while because Jesus just decided to start preaching to people. And his compassion is getting in the way of my Chipotle. So, so, Jesus, you need to chill a little bit. So listen, so Jesus is teaching, right? And so kind of like, the disciples kind of like come over and like they nudge him a little bit and they're like, hey, um, and they almost do it like in a, like almost like they make it seem like they're all about the people, right? Like we love the people so much that we want to make sure that they get food, right? We should just send them away so that they can get food because they haven't eaten all day. Right? But really, I know, because I've been there. You guys ever do that? Like, you're like, you kind of like manipulate the situation to make it sound like somebody else needs something, but really it's for you? Yeah. Every, everyone's laughing, but no one's willing to raise their hand. I know, because I've done that before. You ask if the other person wants to, like, you're like, I always want to sleep over. <laughs> Except, I do it in car rides. When we go on large trips, and long trips, I'm like, hey, does anyone need to pee? And if somebody raises their hands, I'm like, we should stop because so-and-so needs to pee, right? And all the whole time, I'm like dying in the back. I'm like, I have to pee so bad. I'm like sweating. And I'm like, no, we have to stop because so-and-so needs to pee. And... See? See? So you guys don't understand what I'm doing. You guys understand what the disciples are doing right now. They're nudging Jesus and they're like, yeah, by the way, these people haven't eaten all day. And so we should send them away so that they can, they can get something to eat. But Jesus said, he turns to them and he says, you feed them. By the way, there's 5,000 guys there. And back then, they only counted men. I don't know if you guys knew that. But when it says it's 5,000 people, Jesus feeds the multitude, they're only counting 5,000 men, right? So if we know there's 5,000 men, we know there's at least 5,000 women, okay? And on top of that, there's children. So there's at least, let's, let's pretend that no one there has any kids. Let's just pretend there's 10,000 people. Jesus just turned around and said, yeah, uh, feed 10,000 people, please. Talk about increasing your capacity of faith, right? With what they ask. That's another way of saying, are you insane? Like, are you, are you crazy? How are we going to feed 10,000 people? We would have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all these people. How much? And then Jesus turns like, as if like he ignored their, the previous statements. And uh, he just says, how much bread do you have? He asked. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus, did you just not hear what I said? And uh, there's 10,000 people out there, and your question is, how much bread do you have? Uh, and then he says, go and find out. Do you know how long it would take to find out how many ten, how much bread is within 10,000 people? Literally, you would have to, there's like, there's, uh, there's 12 of them, okay? And they have to go find bread amongst 10,000 people. Do you know how long that would take? So they come back and report it. We have five loaves of bread and two fish. You know what probably happened? They did like 150, and then they were like, yeah, forget this. <laughs> We're just going to grab five loaves and two fish and tell them that this is all we have. All right? That's what I would have done. I'm serious, man. I'm like 10,000 people. That would take all day to go through and be like, give me all your bread. Give me all your bread. Give me all your bread. And so Jesus took the five loaves and oh no, actually, Jesus told the disciples to have the people sit down in groups on green grass. If, if, um, if you read a different version, it talks about uh, putting them in, uh, in groups of 500. In my mind, I'm like, like, why? <laughs> how, is, how is this going to help? There's 10,000 people. Putting in the groups of 500 doesn't make it seem like there's less people. But anyways, I'm like, I don't know if Jesus understands this. I'm like, and then Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up towards heaven, and blessed them. I would pay to be there for that blessing, like for the blessing of that food. Because Jesus is about to feed 10,000 people, right? The disciples are there. They just brought up five loaves and two fish. And he's blessing five loaves and two fish as if he had like a, a buffet. Like as if like, as if the, the miracle has already happened, right? As if like, as if Jesus has enough food at that moment to, to feed everyone. And I think that we, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a spiritual principle here that we, have to, that we have to see. And that's that Jesus begins to give thanks before the miracle happens. Come on. Jesus begins to say with a heart of gratitude, and he says, Lord, I believe that you're going to do this. I believe I'm stepping out in faith, right? Like the miracle didn't happen yet. The miracle happens afterwards. And so he, he takes it and he blesses it, which I'm like, how, how, do you, how do you do that? Like, Lord, bless five loaves and two fish. I mean, 
the 10,000 people that are here <laughs> to receive this food. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know how I would pray. You know, like, I don't know. I'm just being honest with you guys. I don't know. Like, if I had one piece of, like, cracker here, right, and I had to divide it amongst all of you guys, I don't know how I would bless this cracker. I just don't know. And, <laughs> and so Jesus takes it, prays for it, and then he says, he says, um, the, breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share, and they all ate as much as they wanted. And afterwards, the disciples picked up 12 baskets, leftover bread and fish, and a total of 5,000 men and their families were fed from those loaves. Really quickly, as my time nears, I just want to talk about expanding your capacity. All right? They had five loaves and two fish. And so many times when we have five loaves and two fish, we say, this is not enough to feed 10,000 people. And I know this is very similar to what I was talking about last week. We, we have a widow, and she says, all I have is I have enough for one last meal. I might as well just make it and die, right? And God says, no, 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 don't worry about it. Just give it to me. I'll make it last. Just give me everything. And again, he says, go look amongst, go look amongst this, this crowd of people, 10,000 people, right? And he says, give me all the bread that they have and all the fish that they have. And they come back with five loaves and two fish. And in my mind, I'm like, there's no way that 10,000 people, that's all they had. And that's why I said, they probably went to 150 people and then stopped. <laughs> because I'm sure there was more. But somebody said, you know what, I'll give it. You know, somebody said that this is all I have for today. Somebody at, the, at some point had to say, yeah, you know what, I'm willing to sacrifice this fish. You know what's awesome? Is that whoever gave that was able to bless 10,000 people. Whoever did that was able to reach 10,000 people. Wouldn't it be amazing if everyone here could reach 10,000 people? Think about that. Wouldn't it be amazing if everyone in this place reached 10,000 people? If Christianity, right, was less about surviving and more about doing amazing things. If Christianity was less about logic. I'm not a, I'm not a really like I'm not a really good math person. I just like math, but I don't need to be a genius to know that five loaves and two fish shouldn't feed 10,000 people. You guys, are, you guys are tracking with me? Like, that just, it shouldn't happen. So if you're a rational person, if you're a thinking person, right, and God's beginning to ask you to do certain things, like, it's going to be a little difficult. Because sometimes it just won't make sense. God will say, no, no, give, give it to me. Right? I will do something far greater with it than you will. For example, for me, one of those things was uh, going to college. I had a free ride to a college. That's like $80,000 that I didn't have, all right? I still don't have. <laughs> That's $80,000. And God said, no, no, don't worry about it. Don't go to, don't, don't, don't go to this college that's going to pay for everything because of your wrestling. Give, give that to me. Give your education to me, right? And go here. Where are you going to pay? I don't know. I lost track of how much I paid there. But around sixty, sixty thousand dollars, sixty-five, seventy thousand dollars, and I did. I decided, you know what, God, doesn't make sense. My dad was like, JC, this is the craziest thing you've ever done. Like, you, you can take something for free. You can go to college afterwards, become a pastor. You can be a pastor at the same time as an engineer. And so the rational thinking people are like, this is how you should do it. This is what makes sense, JC. This makes economic sense. And I remember telling my dad, I was like, Dad, I was like, God's economy works a lot different than the way our economy works. God created the, the world out of nothing, right? What's feeding 10,000 people? If you guys wouldn't mind standing up with me. I know I've been on the subject a lot about giving everything, but that's really what the basis of Christianity is about. You know, if we're gonna be more like Jesus, right, we have to realize that Jesus gave everything including his life and it's never changed it's never it's never been it's never been anything different god has never required anything less from anyone else it's always been the same let me give you a quick example before we finish if i want to join the marines right and this this is an example from from this past sunday that i was listening to and i was like man this is such a great example but if i want to join the marines right i have to do what they say and I remember watching the videos, and this person, uh, th this famous preacher was talking about this, and he was saying that in the videos, you always see the Marines running. 
Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. They're always running. They're either climbing something, they're running somewhere, they're always sweating, like there's always running involved and I hate running. I just hate it, I hate cardio in every way possible. But I tell you what, I probably wouldn't be able to go to the Marines and say, hey, I'll sign up, but I just hate running, so can I skip that? Like I just, it's not my thing, you know? So, but I really wanna be part of the Marines, so can I like just not do that part? Is it cool with you guys if I do that? No. Yeah, I wouldn't I would even waste my time to say, to, to bring it up to anyone. I just wouldn't. Because you know that when you're signing up, you know what you're signing up for. And it's clear in the commercials. It's like, be all that you can be, right? And then they're talking, and then, and then they're like, they're, they're running and they're like chanting things. And, but you would never expect not to do what they're doing on there. Like you would never expect not to train hard. You would never expect to not run. And it's the same thing with Christianity. So many times we've, we've, we've adopted this Christianity that's like, yo, I like Jesus. I love the fact that he's going to save me from my sins and, and I don't want to go to hell and I want to go to heaven. And I love all of that, but I, I don't really like this part. So can I just skip it? Can I just not, not do this part? You know, this reading of, of my Bible, it's not really my forte. It like puts me to bed. So can I just like not do that? This, this prayer thing, it's not really my thing. You know, Jesus, I... I hope you understand. It's not really my. It's not really my thing. Sharing the gospel, although it's a great commission, and it's like the number one commandment. It's kind of like running to me. I don't really, don't really want to do it. It doesn't work like that, right? It just doesn't. You would never go to the Marines and say, "Hey, can I just not do this?" And it's the same with Christianity. We've we moved away from from a Christianity that that, that demands everything from us. You know when. When you accept Jesus in your life, you're saying, Lord, I'm giving my life to you. Do as you will with my life. I don't want to call the shots anymore. And when he says, I need your five loaves and two fish, which is sometimes everything that you have, right? He wants it because he wants to do something amazing. But you know, the beautiful thing about God is that whenever he demands something of you, he always gives back more. It says that they were satisfied. All 10,000 people were satisfied. Not only were they satisfied to their heart's content, I don't know if you guys ever felt like stuffed, but like pleasantly stuffed. Not over stuffed, but like pleasantly stuffed, you know? When like you go somewhere and like you just had a nice meal and you're like, man, that's just hit the spot. It's amazing. It's amazing because out of our lack, and when we give out of our lack, God is able to replenish, not only replenish, but he gives it in abundance to the point where we're filled. If you guys would just close your eyes and bow your heads with me. I would do something different tonight, I just, I, I want to end in, 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 in a manner that's just really reflective. I want you to just stand there, just kind of like close your eyes and just, just have a conversation with God. I know that God's saying different things to you guys in your hearts and, and speaking different things in your life. And, and maybe he's, he's talking to you about some of the gifts that he's given you, some of the talents that he's given you, that he wants you to use for his glory. Maybe it's sports, maybe it's art, maybe it's uh, literature, maybe it's comic books, maybe it's drawing, maybe it's uh, mathematics, maybe it's science, whatever it is. There's some things that God has invested in you. And he says, I want these five loaves and two fish. I want to do amazing things through you. Tonight, I want God to expand our capacity for faith. I want this youth group to be the type of youth group of people who are filled with faith. People who, who when God says, hey, go pray for that person because I believe that that person wants to, that, that person, I want to heal that person right now. I want the type of youth group that, that says, you know what, I'll go do that. Because I believe I'm filled with faith. God, I thank you, Lord, for tonight. I thank you, God, for your powerful word, God, that it goes and it accomplishes every single time what it's set out to accomplish, Lord. God, I pray that you would increase our faith, Lord God, that you would increase the depth of our lives, God. And I pray against shallow living, but I pray, God, against wide living and deep living, Lord God. God, the type of living, God, that, 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 that affects 10,000 people, Lord. God, I pray for each of these students, Lord God, and I pray right now, Lord, that you would just use them, and even these leaders, Lord God, that you would use them, Lord, to, to, to change the lives of 10,000 people, Lord, and more, Lord God. God, I believe that you have amazing things for them, Lord God, and that, that you don't want us to live lives for ourselves, Lord God, that you don't want us to only survive off of five loaves and two fish, Lord God, but that you want us to sacrifice, Lord, so that we can reach those around us. 
God, help us to be more compassionate. Help us to be filled with faith, Lord God. Use this, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Before you guys are dismissed, I just ask you guys to stay for two minutes. Close your eyes right now. And just, you can sit, you can kneel at your seat, but just stay in your seat. You can stand if you want. And we're not going to play any music. But I just want you and God for two minutes. I'm going to ask him about, I have ADD, so two minutes. If I can do it, you guys can do it. Just close your eyes and just begin to ask God, what is it? What are my five loaves and my two fish? What is, it that, what is it that I can contribute? What is it that I can do to affect the lives of 10,000 people? What is it that I can do to begin to increase the capacity for faith in my life? talking to everyone, including leaders. stay here if you just want to pray some more about it. Um, I, want, I just want to invite some of you guys. I love each and every one of you guys so much. I really do. And this staff loves you guys like, so much. So if you ever need anything, we really do love you guys. And I say it all the time, but we're not here because we have nothing else to do. Um, we're here because we care deeply about you guys. But I truly believe that if this world is ever going to change, it's going to be in the hands of young people who have decided to fill themselves with faith, with love and hope, and to decide to follow Jesus in a radical way. I really believe that. And I believe that it can start here. I'm going to share my heart really quickly with you guys and let you guys go. God's been challenging me about starting a nonprofit, a nonprofit organization. You know, those organizations that you see on TV and like, you know, whatever it is, they're like feeding people or, you know, bringing water to different places or whatever it is. There's, there's so many nonprofits now. God's been challenging me about that. So I want you to let you guys know that I'm not just challenging you guys without God challenging me. These messages are coming because God is speaking to my own heart. And he's trying to increase the capacity in my faith. And so as I'm being challenged, I hope that you guys are being challenged as well. And, and I want you guys to know that there's nothing, there's nothing too great that God can do through you. I've heard countless stories of young people doing amazing things who have just decided this is what I want to do and I'm going to believe I'm going to give my five loaves and two fish to God and see what happens with it. Five loaves and two fish. It's really not, 
you know, when you look at it, it's it's really nothing, you know. And what God can do with five loaves and two fish, it's a, it, it really is miraculous. And um, so I just challenge you guys, pray about it. I know that God will speak to you guys individually. And I'm not just talking to the young people here, but I'm talking about the leaders as well. You know, you guys have jobs, you guys have different gifts that you guys have been given. There's people that you guys can reach, including teenagers, that that I can't reach, I'll never be able to reach, I'll never be able to speak to, that I'll never have any influence over in my life. But you guys can. And there's some amazing things that each and every one of this person and in this place can do. And I really believe that if everyone took that challenge, right, just like we take all those crazy challenges online, the Kylie Jenner challenge and the best friend challenge and all those crazy stupid challenges, the ice bucket challenge, if we just took the challenge that God gave us, right, to not only live for ourselves, but to live for others, that we could really change, not only in Connecticut, not only the United States, not only North America, not only the East, the Western Hemisphere, but the entire world. All right, guys, I'm gonna pray real quick for you guys, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys uh, leave. God, I thank you, Lord, for everyone here. I pray right now that your presence, God, would just invade their lives, Lord. That everyone who comes here, God, would feel valued, that they would feel loved, Lord God, and they would feel cherished, Lord God, because it is true that you love each and every one who is here, Lord God. God, I pray right now for all the unmentioned prayers, God, that exist in this place, Lord. We just lift them up to you, God, because you know them, Lord Jesus. And we pray right now that you would begin, God, to just answer prayer after prayer, Lord. And that you begin to fill us with hope, that you begin to fill us with love and with faith, Lord God. As we go out in your community, in our community, Lord, I pray that you would help us to become more like you, Lord God. Increase our capacity for faith, Lord God. Help us to do amazing and crazy things, Lord God, extraordinary things, Lord God. God, I pray right now that Oxford, God, would be the town, God, that people talk about us uh, as a generation of young people decided to do amazing things for your kingdom, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray.